Okay, so we're going to look at sequences like this one. We're going to look at how to find the partial sum and then the infinite sum of such a sequence. So what's special about this sequence? Well, if we look at the numerator, it seems to be adding the same amount each time. Whereas if we look at the denominator, we seem to be multiplying by the same amount each time. I think the structure becomes a bit clearer if we write this instead of as a fraction, we'll write our first term as just 1 times 1, then we'll write our second term as 3 times a half. Then our third term we can write this as 5 times a quarter or 5 times a half squared. Then our next one, 7 over 8, you can write as 7 times a half cubed. So you can start to see now there's some structure of our first terms are all part of an arithmetic sequence, whereas our second terms here, 1, a half, a half squared, a half cubed, form a geometric sequence. You call this type of sequence an arithmetico-geometric sequence, where it seems to contain some structure of an arithmetic and some structure of a geometric sequence. So we could actually write our terms as the first term or the nth term would be a naught times g naught, where these are our naught terms in our arithmetic and geometric sequence. Then the next one would be a1, g1, and we'd have a2, g2. So each time we're multiplying the first, second, third, etc. terms in an arithmetic and a geometric sequence. So what does the nth term look like for such a sequence? Well, we can start with our first term u0, we could say is just a. Then let's think what happens for the next one. We'd need to, for our arithmetic part, add the common difference, d. So we'd have a plus d. Then we'd also need to multiply by the common ratio for our geometric sequence, r. Then if we go on to u2, we start to see the pattern emerge. a plus 2 times d, we've added the common difference again and also multiplied again by the common ratio, r. So you can see now that the nth term of this sequence is going to be un is a plus n times d multiplied by r to the power of n. So now let's use this to evaluate the sum up to the nth term in our sequence. So we're going to take the same sort of approach as the classic proof for the partial sum of a geometric sequence, where we write out all of our terms in full. We're going to multiply this entire sum by r. So here the sn just represents the sum of the first n terms. We multiply everything by r, then later we'll have a go at subtracting both sides of the equation. So a times r, I'm going to write over here now, gives us a r. Then a plus d times r is going to give us a plus a plus d r squared term. So I'm just moving them over so that the powers of r now match up. Then we'll have an a plus 2d r cubed, and so on. Then our penultimate term before this one, when we multiply by r, we're going to get an a plus n minus 1d. And it was r to the n minus 1 gets multiplied by r, gives us an r to the n. But what's missing now is this final term gets multiplied by r. So I'll just write this in underneath, because we've also got a plus nd times r to the n plus 1, which doesn't quite match up with any of our previous terms. So now we're going to effectively have a go at subtracting the bottom equation from the top one, which will give us 1 minus r sn this is now going to be equal to, we keep this a term. Now let's have a look at all of the a terms throughout. So we have a times r, take away a times r. So these two terms actually cancel out with each other. a r squared, take away a r squared. So these two terms cancel, a r cubed, a r cubed. And in fact, all of the a terms cancel with the exception of this a times r to the n plus one terms. So we'll deal with this one later. So now let's focus on our terms with d. So you've got d r, and then there's nothing there being taken away, so we have plus d times r, then 2d r squared minus 1d r squared gives us plus d r squared, 3d minus 2d, lots of r cubed, gives us, once again, just a single d times r cubed, and we start to see the pattern emerge that we've just got d r plus d r squared plus d r cubed, and so on, all the way up to d r to the n. And then we've still got to take away all of this remaining term. So we just take away a plus nd r to the n plus 1. So now we can start to clean things up a little bit here. So we'll take our a term here and we'll leave this geometric series as it is. But what I'm going to do as well is actually add in, not finish with d r to the n, but I'm going to add in a d r to the n plus 1 term. 
and we can compensate for this by now taking away another lot of d r to the n plus 1 in this final term. So instead of taking away just a plus n times d, we'll take away a plus n plus 1 times d, lots of r to the n plus 1. So this will just make our formula a little bit nicer in a moment. So now we can use the partial sum formula for the geometric series here, and we'll just get dr into 1 minus r to the n plus 1 all over 1 minus r. So you could prove this formula in a very similar fashion, multiply everything by r, then subtract and rearrange. And finally we need to take away this remaining term, so I'll write this as minus a plus n plus 1 d all multiplied by r to the n plus 1. So remember this was 1 minus r times the sum we're interested in, sn. So to get sn on its own now we just need to divide both sides by 1 minus r. So let's take this term from the geometric series onto the left. So we have dr 1 minus r to the n plus 1 all over 1 minus r all squared now because we've divided throughout by 1 minus r. Then we've still got this a term and we've got this minus in brackets a plus n plus 1 d term multiplied by r to the n plus 1. So now all of this gets multiplied, divided, sorry, by 1 minus r. And if you find this a little bit cumbersome to work with, we can't really improve the first term too much, but we could write this as g0 minus g n plus 1 all over 1 minus r squared. But then we can make the second term much nicer because then a is actually a0 g0, our first term in the arithmetic and geometric sequences. And here we've got our a plus n plus 1 d becomes a n plus 1 and r to the n plus 1 it's our n plus 1th term in our geometric series. So we can tidy up the second expression somewhat. But now we've managed to get a formula for the sum up to the nth term. We'll have a go at taking limits as n goes to infinity to find the infinite sum. So now we won't spend too long on the details of when this does and doesn't converge, but we could use some tools like for example the ratio test which could tell us that when the modulus of r is greater than 1, this would diverge, each term would get bigger and bigger, whereas when the absolute value of r is equal to 1, so let's say if r was positive 1, this would actually just be an arithmetic sequence, and that sum would never converge unless a and d were both equal to 0, in which case it's just the sequence going 0, 0, 0, 0. And if r was equal to negative 1, then similarly in general, this wouldn't converge. But when the absolute value of r is less than 1, you'll see that this sequence is going to converge. So when r has a modulus less than 1, you see that this r to the n plus 1 term here is just going to converge to 0. It'll get smaller and smaller as n grows to infinity. And similarly here, we've got r to the n plus 1. This term is going to go to 0. But it is being multiplied by something here which would grow to infinity, or perhaps negative infinity, as n goes to infinity. But fortunately this r to the n plus 1 term goes to 0 much much faster than this n plus 1 term grows to infinity. So fortunately this entire term here will also just converge to 0 as n goes to infinity. So then we can say that our infinite sum, we'll call this s infinity, equal to this limit, is just going to be d times r times we just get 1 minus 0 there, all over 1 minus r all squared. And this term has all disappeared other than we're just left with an a over 1 minus r. So this is our formula for the infinite sum for an arithmetico-geometric sequence. So let's return now to the original problem we had at the start. So it's 1 over 1 plus 3 over 2 plus 5 over 4 plus 7 over 8 and so on. We can evaluate this infinite sum now using our formula. So the first term was just 1. So we have a is equal to 1 then our common difference d is 2, and each time we're multiplying by a half, so our common ratio from the geometric part was a half. So then we can just plug this into the formula and we can say that our infinite sum of all of this, d times r, is going to be 2 times a half over 1 minus r all squared, 1 minus a half all squared, plus a over 1 minus r, so just 1 over 1 minus a half. So here we end up with 2 times a half, we get 1 over a quarter which would just give us 4, and here 1 over a half gives us plus 2. So we end up with 
our original sequence then, when we add up all of these terms, we get 6. And now we'll finish with a quick application to probability. So if you imagine you wanted to work out the expected number of times you would have to roll a fair die until you got a 6, we could calculate this using what we now know about arithmetico-geometric sequences. So you know that the expectation, we can write this as 1 times the probability that you get a 6 the first time, plus 2 times the probability you get a 6 the second time, and so on. So then when we start to actually calculate some of these probabilities, so 1 times the probability of getting a 6 your first time is 1 in 6, plus 2 times your probability of getting a 6 the second time, and not having got one the first time, would be 5 6 for your first throw, and 1 6 for your second. Then we would have 3 times you would need a 5 6 squared probability of not getting a 6 on the first two throws, and then getting a 6 the third time. So we can start to see this pattern emerging, that essentially we've got our 5 6 terms, or our common ratio, and our 1 6 and 2 times 1 6 and 3 times 1 6 all give us our arithmetic sequence part. So if I write this as 1 6 plus 2 6 times 5 6 plus 3 6 times 5 6 squared and so on, you can see that we have a would be equal to 1 6, our common difference d is also 1 6, and r, our common ratio, is 5, 6. So you could argue here that actually it would be nicer if we could introduce another constant with our geometric term, so we could multiply by this factor of 1 6, then we'd have an extra variable in our formula there for our nth term. But either way, we can just absorb that constant into our arithmetic sequence if we prefer. So here we can plug into the formula now, d times r, we have 1 6 times 5 6 over 1 minus r all squared, which gives you 1 6 all squared, 1 minus the 5 over 6 gives you the 1 6. Then finally, a over 1 minus r, 1 6 over 1 minus 5 over 6. So this term is just equal to 1, 1 6 over 1 6. And here you have 5 over 36 over 1 over 36, you get 5. So you can see that the expected number of times you'd have to roll your die would then be 6.